Hello, hello, and welcome. I am so excited to be here right now with you. And I am very grateful for the opportunity for this platform to connect with you, to have conversations with you, and to help you expand your potential, enrich and accelerate your career, and help you become a better leader. My name is Jana Masik. I am the host of this broadcast, Powering Unique You. And today, as we, as we dive into amazing conversation, I want to make sure you are joining in. And as you are joining in, please say hello, please say where you're joining in from, please participate, tell me what you think about, share your questions, comments, excitements. This is an amazing day. Well, I want to make sure we're live and I want to welcome you, welcome you to today's show. Well, it's all about how can we improve our communication and how can we improve our connectivity, our connection? Because guess what? The relationships that we are building with others are the utmost importance. Our network is our net worth in a way. Today, I'm very, very happy to bring you an amazing guest. This lady is phenomenal. When I met her, I said, wow, you're a gem. I need to get you on my interview. She is a career coach and behavioral trainer at Legions Group. She is certified DISC trainer. She's also John Maxwell certified coach, trainer, and mentor. And I want to welcome you, Wilma Figueroa. Hello, Wilma. Hi, good morning, Jana. How are you? <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. I'm so, so excited to have you here. And Same here. Yes. And as we're diving into this conversation, so important, uh, I feel each one of us can constantly learn and improve on how to communicate better. I would love for you to share a little bit, uh, just a bit about yourself and, and your background. Okay, well, like I say, I want to first say thank you for uh, having me on this morning. It, it's a great honor for me to be here. And of course, uh, I'm Wilma Figueroa and I am a retired Army veteran. I'm a business thought leader, thinking partner, and I'm also the creator of the uh, Communication Success Viewpoint. And I also help organizational leaders discover their various personality styles and behavior traits within their organization. Because I feel this is very important that if these know these, their differences, this will improve for one, their communication, their work productivity. And of course, it reduces stress and it will minimize conflict, which will create an environment where the team members can thrive. So pretty much that's sums it up in a nutshell of who I am. And of course, I live here in the sunshine state of Florida. I'm married to a, a wonderful husband. We have three children and of course, a, a small teacup poodle. So that's pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> I love this. I, I admire you and I want to thank you for your service um, to this country. And then also for coming out and, and just want to acknowledge there are many veterans and many many people who give their lives to support this country, to support the freedom that we all have coming right. out of, you know, and retiring out of the active service, having challenges and finding right. the, the, the purpose, finding their identity, finding their, you know, maybe new mission. And why, what right. inspired you to become behavioral trainer, Wilma? Well, I had it is really two reasons that kind of inspired me. And one, I knew that there had to be a solution why people really couldn't uh, effectively communicate and work harmoniously together, you know, for the common good. So I was on this little journey, you know, to kind of discover, OK, what, what could be the root cause of the communication breakdown? And like I say, number one, I was a, gov a government contractor many, many years ago. And I've seen that they had a lot of problems in the workplace where uh, people they wasn't um, they really didn't 
connect to each other because they didn't respect each other or you know they just had those different conflicts and you know and with that it causes a lot of stress and it causes a lot of conflict and so also number two as a mother, I have two grown daughters as well. And I wanted to have a kind of better relationship with them because, you know, I wanted us to have a, a created life and an atmosphere where, of course, we had less drama with each other. And, you know, we can build on that relationship, you know, that, that I wanted us to have instead of always, you know, uh, getting into it with each other, not understanding each other, not understanding where each other was coming from, because we all have different perspectives. So those are the kind of the two reasons why it kind of intrigued me to get into the um, the be as become a behavioral trainer. And like I say, and the most important was, was I really wanted to communicate and connect with my daughters and create an environment where we both can, all of us can grow and thrive at the same time. Yes, so, I love yeah. this mission. I love that it was fueled by a personal passion. Mm -hmm. It was fueled by enjoying. Give me one second. I'm 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 making sure that we are live and we're live on okay. um, on YouTube. And I'm just checking in to make sure we're live on LinkedIn, okay. which may not be the case. So I just want to make sure I share. Um, okay. I just want to make sure. Okay. We're good. Okay. Um, um, okay. Give me just one second. Let me show we're not live on LinkedIn, which okay. is absolutely fine, but I do want to share this, um, with our listeners on LinkedIn and, um, and send this and uh, make sure that they know that we're alive too. Okay. So, um, so Wilma, I really, <laughs> really enjoy your passion about, um, you know, finding a way in how to create value, how to create sustainable relationships, and how to find a better ways to communicate. And this is really, really inspiring. And I would say you know, maybe give us some, some why, you know, why, you know, you chose that this is valuable and this is something that you want to give yourself to. But the, first of all, um, the value in it is first, you have to understand who you are as an individual. And once you understand who you are as an individual, and of course, we're all created uniquely and wonderfully and fearfully made. So once we understand who we are, we have, we all have different behavioral personalities and we all have different behavioral traits. So once you understand those differences, now you'll be able to communicate with an individual on the level where they're able to understand where you're coming from. Because like I say, we all have uh, three different personalities and behavioral traits. So for me, once I understood uh, who I was as far as um, a leader and as a mom, you know, how can I um, communicate to my daughters in a way where they will understand and speak to them in a language where they understand and not in the language that I understand? I like this. And, and we dive into this conversation that you may think you know, you just express your communication and you try to connect with others. But I want to hear, Wilma, why is it so important to have an understanding and awareness of your personal style, of your personality, and then also know and have the clues of other people's personalities? And maybe you give us, um, you know, give us some example to that. Okay. Uh, for example, I would say in order for me to understand who I am, now that I understand who I am and I have to understand, say, we'll just say with you and me, because if I understand who I am and I want to be able to connect with you, communicate and connect with you, I have to understand a little bit more about you than you know about yourself. So now once I understand that, now I can uh, can motivate you to be a little bit more productive and, you know, and it guides you in a direction that's going to be fulfilling to you. 
So that that's kind of the kind of it in the nutshell, if that makes sense. I love this. I love this. So it, it ties into the awareness and and um uh the awareness of you know, seeing and reading other people's, their style of communication, their personality, and how they perceive. Maybe even for me, how I see it is where we place our values. Sometimes we place values on relationships. Sometimes we place value on tasks. Sometimes we place value on achievements. So depending on what your value system, depending on how your personality is structured, this mm -hmm. you're gonna have a different style of communication. So what shapes our personality? Well, there's three different things that kind of shapes our personality. For one, it's the environment that we grow up in. Number two, the, our heredity. And of course, number three is going to be the role models, the people that we have in our lives that, you know, just kind of give us that direction that we want to go, whether it's our mother, our father, a coach, a teacher. Those are the role models that we pretty much would have that kind of shapes who, who we become in the long run. This is important, and I feel although we may not affect or influence or make a choice about what family we're born into, right, and what mm -hmm. upbringings we're coming from, right. as adults, though, we have a choice on how we're going to move forward, right? So there, our childhood is is something that we've inherited, you know, by right. what was given to us. Absolutely. We did not make choice about it yet as adults now we have a choice on how we're moving forward the people we surround ourselves with the environment and let's dive into this disc maxwell disc method and give us maybe some of the insights on what styles are there and how those styles and personalities can affect the way we communicate Okay, well, what I do is I also, like I say, I, I help organizational leaders discover these different personalities and behavioral trees. And with our uh, Maxwell Disc personality indicators, it kind of breaks down the different four styles, you know. And of course, there's a lot of history behind it, but uh, we got to. We adopted the in 1928. Uh, Dr. Morrison he introduced the the disc theory to us, which gave us a little bit more of understanding and made it a little bit more simpler how we can understand these different personalities. And those four and what he discovered was those four different personalities. What was called the DISC. That's how he created that. The D stands for dominant. The I stands for influential. The S stands for steady. And of course, the C stands for compliant. And mm -hmm. once you understand your specific uh, personality traits, then you'll be able to say, OK, I know who I am. And these are the personality traits that I display. So when you look at others and you know these differences, now you'll be able to understand, OK, now I can communicate with this with this person based on their communication personality style and their personality traits or behaviors. I love this. And uh, how knowing who we are, gaining the awareness of how we are wired, mm -hmm. as well as knowing how others are wired. And you, you said that, you know, your family, your children, your communication with your daughter have inspired mm -hmm. you to really get very proficient and learn this in depth. And, yes. and also you are helping organizations to find, you know, the connectivity and build a stronger teams by finding out what, what, what wires, what drives people. And right. how can we build a deeper relationship and connections? Those awareness, that awareness, those, uh, you know, nuggets on understanding and, and, and guidelines can really help us. And um, please share a little bit on, you know, what do you see is important? I know that you said that how we treat everyone is how we, you know, how we want to be treated, right? Treat everyone a golden rule, treat others how you want to be treated. And how does it tie into um, to the um, personality types? Great, great question. I'm glad you asked. And let me just give you a, a, a little bit example or just yes. some, and my personal experience, how I'm using this in my own personal life, you know, not just to teach other organizational leaders, but I have used this, this uh, assessment, of course, in my life as well, because for one, I'm a type type I, which is like an influential person and knowing, but I didn't know this before, but 
you know, and like I say, when you learn, knowledge is power. So mm -hmm. when you know the more knowledge you have, the more power that you have to be able to control your outcome. But because I am a, an I personality, and like I say, I wanted to relate to my two daughters, and they both have two different personalities. Mm -hmm. One of my daughters has a D personality. She's very strong. She's very di direct. She's independent. She's results oriented. And I have another daughter, which is the, the C type personality, which is more compliant. She goes by rules. She, she She's analytical. You know, she wants facts. So now that I understood that, so now when I have to communicate with them, I have to understand because I'm this person, I'm outgoing, I'm, I'm, I'm talkative, you know, I just get excited about everything I have to say. But when I'm dealing with my daughters, I have to remember they don't have that same personality as me. When So when I'm talking to my, my daughter, that's a D-style personality. She's very direct. She's very independent and she likes results. So when I'm talking to her, whatever I have to say, I have to get to the point. I can't beat around the bush. I have to be very direct and, and of course, life-giving and explain to her, you know, this is this is. This is all how I want to communicate with you. This is what I mean. And in, in retrospect, the same thing with my other daughter, who is a C-type personality that likes rules, that likes facts, that's like uh, compliance. I have to give her, uh, say, if I want to have her do something, I have to give her all the information up front. And then I have to let her decide, OK, so what do you think is the best course of action for this? So based on that, now we have that relationship where it can grow because now I understand that the way I'm speaking to myself or how I would like to, you know, talk to myself, I'm all excited and enthusiastic. It's not the same with you. So I have to understand that behavior. So. Wilma, I can relate to that so much. And I yeah. can, you gave an example and you gave the story from a personal life. And I, I could relate to that with my children as well and with my husband because he is very analytical. He is right. very, he needs to research everything. He needs to see a big picture. Yes. And although he enjoys my bubbly personality, he likes to listen to me. But when it comes to the facts, you know, he's like, Absolutely. okay, what are the facts, right? Absolutely. And, Absolutely. And, and also how it plays in the workforce with the teams that you are in, you know. Right. And, and I had an experience that uh, I had a person that was very dominant, Mm -hmm. very direct, uh, very to the point, mm -hmm. you know, there is not like this, you know, a lot of, so to speak, you know, excitement or a lot of like personal attachment right. or right. it was very dry. And, and yes. I think it came to me to realize that I, I have to approach the conversation in a different way. Absolutely. And then what's also helpful for me personally is to have a different expectations because I think this is where it can cause a conflict mm -hmm. because when we have a certain expectations of people for the right. way they talk, for the way they're going to pay, for the way they're going to approach us. And when that doesn't happen, we get unconsciously offended. We get maybe frustrated. You know, we are not understanding why they're not really speaking our language. Mm -hmm. and that can be the cause of some disruption, some conflict. So it's so important to see that, to identify those traits, and then to say, okay, it is. there's nothing personal. They just right. have different values. They have different strong traits, strong skill set, and, and what they focus on is a different from what I focus on. But I can find a way to communicate effectively and, and build connections and build relationships with different types of people, which I think is a great value. Absolutely. Absolutely. And like I say, and once you understand there's really no right or wrong, it's just different. You know, and, and once you understand that, it makes a whole lot of difference. And like you said, especially in the workplace, because if you're the, the CEO of a company, you have a certain type of a personality. And most nines out of 10, most of those uh, CEOs, they're, they're the G type personality. They're more direct. You know, they're they they task oriented, get to the bottom line. But you might have an employee that's maybe an, an S type personality. And with that S type personality, they're the type of people they're loyal. You know, they, they're all about people. You know, they're all about 
having that relationship. So when that person and, and they're really they 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 don't really like confrontation. That's their biggest fear for that type of personality. They don't like confrontation. So if you have that um, D type personality and you're dealing with that C type personality, they don't like confrontation. So your tonality makes a difference in the way that you speak to them because if you come to them and you're very direct with them, they feel like, okay, it's getting ready to be a confrontation. So they all kind of back up and have that standoffish approach. And was like, you know what? I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to suppress my feelings because if I say something, then it might get into a confrontation. So mm -hmm. it's, that's why it's very important to understand that. And also, like I say, if you have a, a seat type personality, which you have in your organization, because you have all three, actually. And if you have that C type personality, they're more analytical. You know, they're more organized. So if you come to them with you want them to do something specific, you have to give them time to process that information because that that's what they do. Their biggest fear is they don't like to be criticized. They're mm -hmm. perfectionists, you know, and sometimes they can be all uh, they will be overcritical of themselves. So when you come to them as a leader and you want them to do a specific task, you have to make sure that you give that type of personality that space to make a decision, gather all the facts, gather all the information, let them come to a, a decision on their own and then let them proceed. You know, don't, ex don't expect to say, okay, well, I need this done in like five minutes. It's not going to work with them because they need that time to process that information. So <laughs> this is good. This is really good. So you you gave us some of the you, very descriptive situations that can make or break connections and relationships. Absolutely. And I feel and believe through my personal experience and through observation, the best the best performance. Uh, the best that people put their best work forward are, are the people that feel connected, that mm -hmm. feel that they appreciate it, that they feel that they heard. So if you are working within a team, if you're leading a team, right, or mm -hmm. if it relates to your family, if you're working with your spouse and with your children, or it relates to maybe a community project that you're working on, Knowing the type of person and the personalities uh, that are surround you're surrounded with is so crucial. And Wilma, maybe you could give us some nuggets for each of those as far as what their strengths are. You, you've given some of it, but maybe you could just go one by one and give us the most important highlights that can have people gain a little bit more perception and understanding on that. Okay. Um, well, let's start with our... Um Let's start with our, our D type um, personality here. Some and when you when you're dealing with a uh, a deep type deep type personality, sorry about that. <laughs> Getting my words stressed here. Okay. So um, basically, like I say, because the D it, it's a dominant personality, and some of those their traits for them they are strong, they are driven, uh, they are direct and to the point. That's what they they have in them. This is some of their strength. And one of their uh, weaknesses is they do not like to be um, what's the word I'm looking for. They do not like to be there. They don't like to be taken advantage of. That's mm -hmm. one of their, their greatest fears. So, you know, you have to be very uh, understanding and aware of that. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, the way that you you deal with them is uh, I'm sorry here. But those kind of dry. Sorry about no that. No worries. So I like that D personality is when you are strong, when you are really dominant, and you direct. You expect the results. You expect the people to follow through with what your your expectations are, and and you don't like to be taken advantage of. And and right. I, what I feel is, in a way, there's some traits of each in in every one of us. Yeah, right, right, right. That their dominance. A, a certain one is more. Um, I say dominant is more visible, is more identifiable. So, uh, so yeah, please share some more. I cannot wait to hear and learn from you. Okay. Um, and a little bit more about that. Okay. Um, like I say, their greatest fear is uh, they don't like to um, 
their greatest fear is they don't like to be, excuse me, be taken advantage of. So kind of the ways that you would kind of communicate with them is when you're communicating or are you trying to connect with that D type style? You have to be brief. Like I say, you have to be direct. You have to be the to the point. And when you do that way, just leave, be direct, be brief and to the point, And then you leave. They mm -hmm. always like to ask a, a lot of a questions, like a lot of what questions and not how. So when you're talking to them, you ask them because they always they always result oriented. So when you're speaking, you ask the, the what questions, not how questions. And also don't ramble. So when you have a discussion and you talk about the problem and the effects of the outcome, because like I say, they are solution type oriented. And of course, when we're dealing with the I type personality, the I type personality, and let me back up a little bit. The D type personality, they make up about uh, 17, three percent actually of the um, of the population. Mm -hmm. And so when we're dealing with our the I style, okay, these are the people that are that are like that are fun, you know, they're they're the life of the party, they're great storytellers, and and they're very popular. And so the people that have this type of personality, they make up about 11% um, of the population, which is a very small percentage. And of course, some of the characteristics traits of the, um, the I-type personality, they, they're relationship oriented, they're very talkative, they're encouragers. And of course, they treasure the great experience with people. So, you know, if you're in connection with them, they just love to be around people and they just love to enjoy the experience that they have with you. This type of personality or more what we call the, the people oriented type personalities. This D type style personality is a personality that's more task oriented. So mm -hmm. those are the, the differences. Yeah, so I like this. So in a way, how I see that uh, it is the dominant is very much oriented on solutions, very right. much looking at a big picture. They want to know what, um, how, what results you're going to get. Tell Absolutely. me the point, be very direct, don't take advantage of me. Now, right. influencers, uh, mm -hmm. our personality, they're, they their values are people, their values are relationships, they're fun, they're engaging, right. they love to build connections and have value uh, and, and draw value from that. And, and maybe share what are the what are the things that they don't like, they're afraid of, or they may get triggered about the, for the I personalities? Okay, for the I personality, they fear rejection. They mm. also fear people not liking them, loss of a approval. So that's their greatest fear. Yes, and I can relate to that. Yeah. Very well, I can relate to that. Uh, yet I do believe those fears can project, uh, either hold us back, or they right. help us to move forward. And when we do know, like let's say, I feel that I've fallen into, I have not taken the assessment, but it will be interesting to see, but I fall into yeah. that category from your description of right. valuing people, enjoying the relationships. And I do f fear being rejected and being you know, undervalued. Yet I, I, in a way I have to step over and move forward toward you know, overcoming those fears and not letting them hold me back. So this is also very valuable knowing your 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 challenges and what you may be challenged about absolutely and of course with each one of these different personalities um, traits you do have some obstacles and for the obstacles one I'll give you a couple of obstacles for the eye trait um, when they when it becomes out of balance or they what I call they overuse that they become very talkative mm -hmm. and they can appear phony you know not authentic and they can become distracted and also they can overcommit. They can always say, yeah, yes, 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 yes. I'm going to do everything. But when at the end of the day, nothing really gets done because like I say, they're more into the people. They're not really worried about the task. So mm. like I said, overuse of that, this is, this is an obstacle that sits in their way. Important to know that because yeah. I can see the tendencies of give, 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 serve, Absolutely. serve, serve, and Absolutely. then not taking time to rejuvenate, restore, and then getting distracted and overcommitting to the point. And then at the end of the day, you're like, well, I have not moved my progress towards the things Absolutely. that I do have to accomplish. So this is important to know. 
maybe share a little bit about dominant. What are their obstacles that they need to overcome? Okay, some of the obstacles when they when they do that, they become because they're not afraid of of conflict. The D's are not afraid of conflict. So because they are not afraid of conflict, they can become argumentative, inconsiderate, not complimentary to others, you know. And also sometimes they really don't like to apologize. You would rarely hear them say that I'm sorry about anything. Mm -hmm. So, so when, maybe this is a good reflection. If you are the type of person that really task oriented, that really yeah. um, driven toward achievement and making things happening, and and you your team is not going to be all of the same. The team is right. going to be falling into all different categories. And if you're so strong and you're not apologetic and you're not consciously yeah. choosing to. Um, move forward with building relationship and understanding the other type of people, it is going to be challenging for you to create that connectivity to communicate in a way that other feel heard and understood and appreciated. This is really, really good, Will. I love this, these nuggets. And maybe we dive into the the C and S ones that okay. we can we can chat we can sh you know showcase them as well. Okay. Well, the S type personality, they're the type of loyal, they're, they're very loyal, they're helpful, and they can always be relied to, uh, to do the follow up. And also they make up 69% of our population, which is a big number of the population. And some of their traits are they're easygoing, they're, they're easygoing and agreeable. They're very good listeners. They're compassionate and they treasure peaceful relationships. So like I say, you know, majority of the population, these are our, our I, I'm sorry, the S style personalities. And one of their greatest fears of, their greatest fear is loss of security. And like I said before, confrontation. They do not like confrontation. Yes, yes, this is important. Right, is important. right. And, uh, and, and I said, what are their obstacles? Some of the obstacles for the, um, the S personalities, but well, let me just talk about a little bit about um, whether did I tell you about the 69% of that. Okay. Um, some of their obstacles for the, for the S type personality, they're the type of person that when they feel that you're in confrontation with them, they shut down. They, they don't, they don't, they will not talk to you. And they would feel like, okay, you know, I'm not being heard. And they're, they don't like people to over talk them. You know, they like the people to be authentic with them. So when you get in, when you're dealing with them, they will shut down. So that's a big, big, big obstacle for them to make oh. it, to put it more simply. This is so profound. This yeah. is so wise because, Wilma, imagine a dominant person, mm -hmm. you know, that is only driven, and you've given that example, only driven by results, get it, get it to the point, make, mm -hmm. make your point move forward. And the person that is valuing relationship, valuing to be heard, valuing to be understood, there's going to be the the, the big difference between their perception in life and perception and communication. Absolutely. And what we are talking about, how to improve your communication and how to help you connect with people better. Well, those insights, just simple things that you can learn and implement and do can help you tremendously improve and give you the awareness in how you need to adjust. And you right. almost need to Put your personality aside in a way and just open up and be present and listen to other person's point mm -hmm. and to truly genuinely care to communicate and connect in a way that the person feels heard, understood, appreciated, safe. And if you do that by leading in that way, you're going to have phenomenal results. Absolutely. And, and another and more, two more things I think is very important about the Austin personality before we move them, move into a little bit of way of how you communicate when sometimes they can be too laid back because they are more slower and and they have a slower pace than the other type one. Like I say, they can become appear too laid back. So that could become like an obstacle for them. And sometimes they have a difficulty in saying no. So that would be another obstacle for them as well. Yes. So, yes. and a couple of things when when you're trying to connect with that I, uh, the the S type 
style person, of course, you have to smile a lot with them, even if you don't feel like smiling, because like I say, they they thrive off of people being friendly. You know, you can just look friendly and don't be overly aggressively and minimize the confrontation. So these are some of the ways that you can communicate with that uh, that Ed style. Yes, this is really, really good. And let's dive. I think we we need to cover the C one. Okay, last one, right? We'll let's make that, that really quick. Yes. Ah. Okay. For the C style, this is a compliant type person. Mm -hmm. This is a person that is uh, they're detail oriented and they are neat and orderly. And with this type of style, they make up seventeen percent of the population. And with their traits they they seek environments where they are uh where they honor logic and facts they're analytical mm -hmm. and they always finish with their start and mm -hmm. their greatest fear is criticism yes yes i can relate i can relate to that i could see that mm -hmm. uh, i probably have less of a c because <laughs> <laughs> i am sometimes struggling to get through well i don't I, I'm not struggling completing all of the projects in my life, but some yeah. things I can see like just from your description that I can overcommit to being with people. I can overcommit to serving people, which is good. Yeah, right. there needs to be a balance, right? right and I right, feel right. That even with you sharing here this, this insights can help us to gain a basic awareness. And, and if yes. you, you know, if you want to dive deeper into this and really get a, a, a great understanding of how it affects you and how it affects your team or your family, please reach out to Wilma on LinkedIn, connect with her and, and have a conversation with her. Now, I would like for you to share the, for the C, what their obstacles um, are and maybe what they, you know, you mentioned a little bit of what, what really they're thriving on. Right, right. And when you're dealing with the C, when their strengths are out of balance, they could become moody. They could become socially insecure. They were kind of like, they don't want to be out with, with people in the crowd, you know, they prefer to be by themselves. They have analysis of the paralysis. They, they always want a lot of information and they always overanalyze things. And sometimes they can appear cold and distinct. So these are some of the obstacles that kind of stands in, in, the, C, in the C's way. And in order for you to um, communicate with the, the C style type personality, you just got to remember one thing. Just remember that they need facts and details. That, that's all they need. And give them time to process that information. Mm, so so yeah. that, that's, you know, like I say, they only make up 17% uh, of the population. But like I say, and, and just a rule, everybody, you just don't have one or two of these uh, different personality traits. You have maybe one or two that might dominate. Mm -hmm. dominate one another so everybody we all have all four of these in us but it just depends on where you're at and what you're doing this is how they're going to show up yes this is good and i do feel that they somewhat very um distinctively present in, in, you know, in the way we carry ourselves in the way we see ourselves in the way we see the world through our perspective. Right. And I also believe that you by gaining the awareness can maybe shift some of those things and be more, um, receptible be more f open, be right. more uh, accept, you know, having an acceptance to, seeing that other people may not be exactly the same what you are. Absolutely. And the other tendency that can happen is that usually when we have dominance and certain characteristics, we have certain strengths that come natural to us. And when we have those certain strengths, it's somewhat unconsciously that we have this belief that they come natural to us. They're easy to us. Those strengths or those traits are, you know, no brainer. And we right. feel that they should be the same for others. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, again, our expectations of others are out of balance. Yes. Our expectations of others to know what we know to, you know, maybe communicate the way we communicate or maybe have the same strengths. If, if someone is very analytical, is very data driven uh, right. and, and, you know, that person try to communicate with a person that is very much relationship driven, their mm -hmm. expectation is going to be out of balance. So right. that awareness is so significant because then you're going to give yourself 
a, a permission and you're going to give yourself a space and you're going to also slow yourself down with your instinct judgments Absolutely. about people, about their capacities. And just because the person is not data driven, doesn't matter that the person is less valuable. We're just Absolutely. all different. And I feel being open to embrace different types of people, different communication styles and growing and learning your own self-awareness will help you to go a long, long way. Right, right. And, and pretty much what that says, you, you heard of the golden rule, right? Everybody Absolutely. heard of the golden rule? Treat everyone the way that you like to be treated. So mm -hmm. what I try to do is incorporate what we call the platinum rule is to, to say and do unto others how they prefer to be done unto them. Mm -hmm. So like I say, when we're thinking about or we're talking about communication, I believe that we should implement that platinum rule. You know, talk to them in a way that they want to be talked to, that they want to be understood. Yes, this is really good because that, again, how, the topic of our conversation is how do we strengthen, how do we improve Absolutely. our communication? And sometimes we look at some external ways or tips or tactics, you know, right, like, right. oh, I have to say certain things this way or that right, way. Right. And although that may be helpful in some extent, I feel the most profound changes and the most profound improvements you can gain is from this awareness, right? Mm -hmm. From the exactly. awareness of who you are, what drives right. you, what style of communication you have, and then also being able to discern and being able to notice the differences exactly. of people around right. you and then tailor or so to speak cater your communication style to others absolutely that is so true and, and that's a good point that you just brought up like i say once you understand and you have that awareness now you have to modify your behavior to come alongside and come alignment with theirs like i say and everybody's not willing to do that mm -hmm. you know so that's where the connection piece is missing yeah we communicate because we talk back and forth, but are you connected with them? You have to take that time and that effort and be willing to do that connection with them. So you have to kind of get, like I say, on their level, mm -hmm. you know, meet yeah. them where they are. Yes. And I like something you shared with me when we had an earlier conversation. You said mm -hmm. everybody communicate and everybody can communicate. Absolutely. If you connect. Right. Right. So yes. Your point is that we all communicate. We all, mm -hmm. so to speak, you know, network or we do this or we do that. And sometimes in our teams, we communicate and talk about things that are important. Yet, if we don't take that time and that awareness and willingness to truly connect with others, Absolutely. get on their level, get to understand what drives them, get to understand what can be of interest to them. Absolutely. Um, then, yeah, we're just going to be on that surface level, right? It is right. not going to go deeper. It is not going to strengthen our bonds. And for utmost importance, it is for your family. Absolutely. You know, you have the people that you love, the people that you surround with your, you know, yourself uh, every day. And right. of course, for your teammates, because those are the people that you work for, work with. And those are the people that, um, you know, help you if you're leading the team, you know, that's the team that helps you to create the projects and, and make things happen. And Absolutely. if you're part of a team, you know, you're working with people that can be completely different and they have different drivers, they have different aspirations. So taking time to connect on a deeper level will, will definitely set you up, set you apart and set you up for success. Absolutely. Yes. And, and Wilma, maybe we could, um, as we close, you know, get to the closure of our conversation. I do uh, appreciate all the great tips that you've shared with us. Maybe you could share some of the things that you're doing and that you're offering and how people can find you if they do want to learn more about what you do. Okay. Thank you. Uh, first of all, like I say, as, as like Janice John said, as we close, you know, I hope some of this information was valuable to you. And the way that you can connect with me, of course, you can go to uh, number 2 dream dot com. This is my website. You can connect with me there or you can connect with me on Facebook and LinkedIn. And also uh, you can connect with me via um, email which is encouraged to dream with Wilma at gmail.com. 
And so I can say, you know, if you are interested in this, like I say, we can just get on a call, book a 15 minute call with me and we can just have a, a little bit of a conversation to see where you are and see how I can be of service to you. But those are the, the main ways There's my website, which is, again, is encourage the number two dream with dream at G. Uh, I'm sorry, www.encouragetodream.com is the um the website the email yes and the email is uh work encourage to dream with wilma at gmail.com yes thank you so much wilma and and yeah. i hope that our listeners can can uh, relate to the information we've covered and that I hope that it will help you as you tuning in to really get a gain of perspective. I certainly have learned new things today and new tips and new awareness. And I believe that we can all dive deeper. If you choose to dive deeper, connect with Milma and uh, she'll be happy to support you, whether it's your personal journey and you want to enhance your relationships and your connections with your loved ones, or it's your professional aspirations and uh, whether you're a leader of the team and you're managing the team or you're or, you know, a leader to yourself and you're right. managing yourself and managing your team, um, you know, your, your colleagues and your teammate, uh, I do believe everybody can, can benefit from gaining more understanding of those, um, those types, who absolutely. you are, and then also who you work with. Yes, absolutely. And I thank you for that. And just a, just a little disclaimer here, this not, the, the personality is not a label. It's not to put everybody in the box and put a, a label on it because this is not who you are. These are just some indications of some of your behaviors that you might possess or behavioral traits that your family members might possess or some of the coworkers might possess. Like I said, this is not in stone. This is not who you are. These are just indicators and awareness of the behavior. Years. Oh, Wilma, thank you so much for this disclaimer, because I feel yes. sometimes we tend to uh, be afraid in a way to say, oh, I'm just going to go through this and it's now it's a label for me. Well, that's Absolutely. not true because no. we, our life is fluid. Our choices are fluid. And at certain time of our life, I can look back, you know, uh, maybe I was strong in compliance. Maybe I was mm -hmm. strong in following the rules and, you know, making the processes happen. And then as I evolve, as I grow, as I develop, uh, there may be some pivots and shifts in my behaviors yeah. and what I see valuable. So it is just gaining an awareness. It's a somewhat of a tool for you, another tool that you can put in your toolbox that can enhance your communication, that can Absolutely. enhance and help you to create more meaningful connections with others. And then you could use that at your own disposal and, and you can learn more. There are many other tools that are available and many other skill set that you could learn to help you improve and grow. And I feel it's a journey, right? It's a yeah, journey. Absolutely journey of development and we are all embarking on this journey constantly learning improving and bettering ourselves well right. Wilma thank you so much I appreciate you joining in today giving us these nuggets of wisdom and I'm so grateful that we've connected I look forward to chatting with you again soon and our listeners uh, reach out to Wilma if you need our help thank you thank Wilma. you thank you guys have a blessed day bye bye for now Wow, this was fantastic. I feel this was so much goodness, so much great advice, so much valuable inspiration. I hope that you've gained some, some tips and some takeaways. If you do implement them in your life, even from that conversation, it can help you to really progress, to make a difference in your life and the life of your loved ones. I believe that by sharing our knowledge and by encouraging each other to improve, grow, and develop. We can change ourselves, we can become the people that we're meant to be, and we can change this world to be a better place. I see you next time.